So we're here today really to focus on female sexual wellness and I suppose options that are there for treating it and talking a little bit about Mary Ann's experience of treating that in, in her practice. So I suppose just to start off, Mary Ann, if you could tell us a little bit about boutique wellness and I suppose your journey into owning that practice in North Carolina. Sure. Well, I've been a pharmacist for almost 17 years and in traditional pharmacy and uh, realized that um, my patients weren't getting any better. Um, they were on so many medications, blood pressure medications and other medications to help with those side effects. So I got into, um, first got into the A4M, had my fellowship through the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, and then wanted more information and then got my uh, certification in clinical nutrition. So I started Boutique Wellness because people were coming to me um, after what I was learning to help balance their life to achieve, they, they just had issues with weight loss, with sexual wellness. So it kind of happened organically. And I started practice about two years ago and it's been, it's been pretty, it's been steady without nice. Mark. So I've been, I've been very blessed. And it's a pleasure to be here, by the way. So thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and so the, since you started, that was two years ago, you started really in the uh, clinic nutrition, A4M side of things. And have you found that, I suppose, people are more open to the, an alternative approach to the, alternatives to pharmaceuticals and, and that traditional approach that you would have been used to? Yes. Yeah. They, they wanted, they knew that what they were doing wasn't working. So I focused mostly on drug induced nutrient deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I actually started um, doing pharmacogenomics and trying to fine tune their medications. And then I found Berkeley Life about a little over a year ago. And to be honest, I've been using Berkeley Life Professional with a lot of my hypertensive patients, especially those that are on, on two or three different mechanisms for their blood pressure. So I've been able to actually decrease, if not um, discontinue a lot of their blood. As long as there are no other comorbidities, I've been able to do that pretty successfully. Fantastic, that's great to hear. And, and for your patients that are coming in, you know, what is a normal, you know, work up for them? Like, how do you start the analysis? Because I'm sure it's a very thorough, um, you know, review of their history. So what does a typical patient journey into, you know, ongoing treatment in your practice look like? Um, well, I've been using um, what's called the metabolic code. Um, Jim Laval is one of my mentors and it, it utilizes a questionnaire plus a full functional lab assessment. So patients go to the lab and they get about 11 vials of blood drawn. And what's nice is it has a beautiful algorithm that develops a program, mm -hmm. uh, a report, because my appointments are usually about an hour. The first appointment's an hour and a half. So I spend a lot of time getting to know how they got to where they are right now. Not so much where they are, but well, how did it all start? And you can't do that in 15 minutes. Mm. My appointments are an hour and a half. Um, I start with their report, which was generated based on certain algorithms, based on how they answered their questions and their labs. So, so a lot of times they forget what I'm, what I'm saying. So they have this, this report that they can take home with them. And that's how I usually start the visit. They, a lot of times, I just want to know what it is they're there for. A lot of times it's because they, they have hot flashes and they want me to balance their hormones. Um, but first things first is I got to dampen that cortisol. I got to mm -hmm. fix the adrenals, um, you know, fix what's causing that. And then usually uh, we, won't, we won't, it's not necessary to have as many hormones. So now, now understanding um, the foundation of what I do is not giving them 12 different supplements as they walk away, is making them understand how they got there and then giving them the foundation of supplements, which includes Berkeley Live. It is mm -hmm. the foundation of pretty much every, every patient that comes in the door because it, it, because it just helps optimize everything I'm doing. So it's, it's essentially you're you're bringing them on the journey. You're not just piling loads of supplements on their plate. You're saying, okay, here's why you're getting it, and here's like an incremental approach to uh, implementing this. And and Beth, you you've used the metabolic code on and off, I think, believe for a, quite a while as well. Is that kind of similarly been your experience? Yes, I actually was in on the very first beginnings of the metabolic code, helping to like make the program. So I've been very familiar with the metabolic code. Excellent. And so Marianne, then you, you developed obviously the coffee and cleaver side of the business then. How does that differ from your boutique wellness practice? And I suppose, why would someone choose one over the other? 
Um, that's a good question. So I love to learn, right? I'm, I'm a geek. So I went back and I got my certification in chronic inflammatory response from Dr. Andy Heyman and Richard Shoemaker. Because I started seeing people that were really sick and there was something more than they needed than just hormones. So, um, and also my partner, Dr. Cleaver, he, um, he was able to um, help his, his, his vitiligo. So we knew we had something big here and we wanted to share it with others. And we didn't want to have a brick and mortar. So we wanted to do something that where we can reach more people. So we started Coffee and Cleaver with the focus on uh, mold issues, chronic inflammatory response syndrome and vitiligo. But that's kind of morphed now into weight loss. So we're doing weight loss and sexual wellness because we can do that telemedically. Yeah. Um, which is nice because they don't have they, a lot of people now with the issues that are arising, they can't leave their house. They're scared to go to a clinic. So everything can be sent directly to them, uh, to their house, and we can see them just like this. In your in the current situation, obviously you're doing a lot more Zoom calls, a lot more uh, treatment over over telehealth. Is that something that is has been easy to adapt to, or have you? Is there any challenges that you've had to overcome in doing that? No, it's it's been wonderful, um, actually. What I like is you guys have those little strips. Mm -hmm. So I mail them to the patients. I mail several because I want more than one. Sure. You know, they test it and then they test it again in two hours. And then again, after they eat a good meal, okay, let's see, it's still there. You know, so I, I, I mail things to them all the time, different ways to test. I like to test for pH. There are these strips that you can get, Hydreon strips, you know, in increments of 0.2 normally. And then the Berkeley Life, because that, that's, that's part of what I do when I see them anyway at the clinic. So it's, it's very, I like the face-to-face. -face. I like to yeah. see you. Um, phone is okay. It works well for those that don't have Zoom or yeah. aren't, don't have computers. Um, but I, I try to make them comfortable, let them know. I think the face-to-face -face of seeing us being able to be able to relate is, is really powerful. And this is the future. Because yeah. now I can see people in the Philippines. I can see people in Asia, you know, because mm -hmm. they're, they're still suffering too. So that's that's the good thing. It's, it doesn't limit us to what we can do. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose it's 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 adapting because you have to really. There's not we don't really have any choice right now. Um, but just to touch then on this, the you, obviously we touched already on hormones, but on the female sexual health side of things, is you've obviously been in practice now two years, and then the 17 years of being a pharmacist. Have you found that women now are more open to having that conversation and maybe expressing the concerns that they have around sexual health to you um, when they come into the practice? Yeah, like my goal for them is, um, or and for them when they come in, I don't, I don't make their goals. They tell me, I always ask them, but they just want to feel like a woman again. Mm -hmm. They want to feel potent and confident when they walk into a room, and that's that's what I try to focus on. It's how, how do you feel about yourself? How confident are you? And a lot of times it stems from just hormone imbalances. A lot of times it's something in their childhood. So I don't just focus on nutrition. I also do mind, body, spirit, the body as a whole. And like I said, I always try to get to the root of how they got to where they are. So uh, with women, they're, they're open because they, they know that they're not happy in the situation they're in. So I, I help guide them. I'm not telling them what to do, to be honest. They're telling me what they want. And I'm just guiding them. But I have little tools in my toolbox, which is great. And I, I kind of can fine tune, okay, this is what I can use. So it's not everybody's treated the same way. Right. Everybody, has, it's not, it's, it's a little puzzle that I'm trying to put together for them. And, and you mentioned that the supposed to psychological piece of it, which is something that's, you know, maybe harder to treat sometimes. Is that something that you treat or do you work with other practitioners that are maybe more specialized in psychological components? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I, I get that a lot because they, when I'm sitting with them, a lot of times they just want someone to listen to them mm -hmm. and they feel like it's a therapy session because I'm, I'm engaged, I'm listening, I'm in tune with what they're saying and they don't get, they're not used to that, even in their family life. I mean, their husbands hardly pay attention to them now, you know, especially with all the strict domestic violence is up, you know, yeah. uh, and, and, and because everything was home and just people's anger is just, is increasing it's terrible mm -hmm. so yeah so I, I try to get to that I don't I don't um, give professional advice when, when it comes to therapy but I have some and they're they're booked I mean there there's no you can't you can't even get an appointment yeah. in this area yeah yeah that's yeah that's the profession I get into if that's yeah. a calling of yours yeah, yeah. Um, and Beth when I spoke to um, Dr. Lark yesterday he you know we talked about the erectile dysfunction is endothelial dysfunction and 
is that essentially the same thing for for women when they come in with some element of sexual dysfunction is that it's a it's a sign of some bigger health issue is it a, it's a sign of something else that you know we should be addressing outside of just the sexual health issue yes it is like women have the same kind of tissues that are erectile tissues as men do. However, we're a little more complicated. It's not just about our erectile tissue. It's about our stress level. It's about what we're feeling and our relationships. Mm -hmm. But as far as the nitric oxide piece for sex, it's very similar to men. Us women need adequate nitric oxide in order to be able to respond, to feel. We need adequate nitric oxide to lubricate. So if we don't have enough nitric oxide, we can't feel and we're not lubricating. And does that really make us want to have sex? Mm -hmm. Not so much. And then it's, it's pretty cool about optimizing nit nitric oxide in, with nitrates to increase our neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. to balance our serotonin, our dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, melatonin for sleep. Nitric oxide is essential for that too. So it kind of addresses the, the whole picture. And it's because with that in mind, and, and Marianne, with your approach of, you know, that very comprehensive intake and the fact that all of our nitric oxide levels do decline with age, is there anything proactive that someone could do to address, I suppose, the inevitability of their nitric oxide decline or anything that you would recommend lifestyle or diet wise that is just a, a given for everyone as they age? Um, lifestyle, you know, increase in arugula, highest in nit nitric oxide, beets, um, spinach, celery. Those are some great foods that they can eat. Um, taking Berkeley Life Professional is, is definitely part of my program. I, mm -hmm. I take it every day myself. Um, but what I also learned was optimizing hormones. I used to give testosterone with an astrazole for my men, and now I'm changing that because I'm realizing that men need estrogen because it's necessary for the production of nitric oxide. So, and here we are trying to suppress that, right? Because DH, because testosterone eventually con converts to estrogen. And to prevent that, we have aromatase inhibitors. And I used to think that, you know, we, we had to add that. It's added to pellets. Uh, we added in, in, you know, tw I usually do twice weekly or three times weekly dosing. Now I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe that approach is wrong. And they need it for, and I'm seeing a lot of cognitive decline uh, clients too. So they need estrogen. Um, so that's, that's just my change now. So I'm, I'm trying to optimize that instead of doing um, um, aromatase inhibitors. I'm, I'm, I'm with Beth's help. I'm realizing they need a calcium deglucurate in a proper dosing to help with that, um, that removal of the extra estrogen. So because they, it, we need to maintain the body's homeostasis on producing these hormones naturally, because when they're optimized, then NO is optimized. And now I'm realizing NO is the miracle molecule that's necessary for every component of the body to work in a, in a symphony. And it's, it sounds, I, my understanding of hormones is quite limited, but it sounds like there's always that balancing element of, you know, whatever you introduce, understanding what those knock-on effects are. But again, for you, how many of your patients, roughly percentage-wise, would you use hormone therapy with? And the reason I ask that is because I feel in the general population, there may be a, a stigma or a misunderstanding of the eff efficacy of proper or correctly applied hormone treatment. How many of your patients would you say are, are currently using hormone therapy or would well, use hormone therapy? Well, my patients are uh, ranging anywhere from the age of 45 to 80. Mm -hmm. So... Pretty much, I would say 70% of them, nice. you know, yeah, because we live in America, you know, like we just live in such a toxic world mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate you don't see that so much in Japan, 
um, because they're, it's, it's not as toxic. They eat from the land and they're optimized. We have what's called xenoestrogens, which binds to the receptors, which, which makes us toxic. And the, the natural estrogens aren't able to bind to those receptors because of the toxic load that we've had in this world. So I think being mindful of you know, what we're consuming, what we're putting on our body, what we're touching, mm -hmm. you know, what we're using to clean our houses, those affect our hormones. And knowing that every thought, every chemical, everything that we, we put in our bodies and our mouths, and even with urine, I mean, they did a study, and I, I can't quote this study, I, I would love to, maybe I'll send it to you, in yeah. Long Island, that they found uh, hormones in their drinking water, because it is recycled. Yeah. You know? And so is SSRIs. What are the two common most prescribed? It's birth control and SSRIs. So that's being recycled. And that's affecting our children's hormones. Look at them. They're getting cycles at nine years old. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I think, we, you know, there's, there it needs to be uh, more addressed and we need to um, really clean up this planet. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there, because I think that can be somewhat overwhelming because when you talk about all the different toxins and in, in, in in just in our environment, it's hard to know how to avoid them. Is there a good resource where someone could go and if they had a concern about a product or if they wanted to find a, a very clean alternative, like either do, is there a good resource that someone could go and find that kind of information? Yeah, there, um, there are some. I, I, I like to refer people to the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. Those mm -hmm. are great foods and, and I'm sure there, there are some resources on there as well. Okay. Um, the, the Environmental Working Group. There we go. Okay. EWG. Dot okay. work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's similar to you know when someone's coming into integrative health space, and similarly when they're looking to eat clean, it's just sometimes very overwhelming with the amount of information and how fast the in, things change and things move. It's just those kind of resources where somewhat uh, correlates it all together is, is helpful. Um, so I, I suppose, Marianne, is there anything else in, in terms of your practice, either with boutique wellness or coffee and cleaver, that you know, you'd want to share with people, or anything? exciting that you've coming up that you kind of want to let people know about? Yeah, we're starting a weight loss component um, with, because we use a lot of regenerative medicine too, peptides. So I was talking to Beth yesterday. I'm like, you know, I use a lot of BPC, body protection compound 157. It's found in gastric juices, right? I think peptides are so powerful. We have to be careful um, and because, you know, it's not FDA approved, mm -hmm. but there's so many great studies and they're stimulative. And that's what I found is NO is almost comparable to BPC because mm -hmm. you're, you're improving that micro and mi micro circulation, you know, and, and you're getting those nutrients to where they need to go. Similar to what kind of BPC does, stimulates those receptors. So you don't need to have as much. So with regards to what we're adding, we're doing a weight loss component that adds um, fasting mimicking. I, okay. I love the fasting mimicking diet, Prolon specifically, mm -hmm. and peptides. So no one is doing this yet. You know, it's very new, uh, but I, it depends on whether or not they can inject or if they want to take something orally. But that's what we're going to be offering. It's a program so they can look on coffeeandcleaver.com or wellness or look for us on facebook or youtube uh, we're trying to get out there as much as we can i know so. i know and, and, and again i think there's more opportunities to do that kind of work online that there ever was um so that, that's exciting i think the prolon piece is something obviously that's been in the functional medicine space for a while but it's about now being strategically how you're applying it um so that's interesting to see your and, and beth anything else on your end beth that you know you want to share on the nitric oxide and sexual wellness part <laughs> Um, I, well, we were talking yesterday and we were just talking about how we use the Berkeley Life Professional as a base supplement because by improving the circulation and the microcirculation, this allows whatever kind of treatment you are doing or whatever you're taking, it allows those nutrients to get to where it needs to go and do what it needs to do. So without optimal circulation, microcirculation, you may be not using what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's why, you know, in the work that we've done, it's really about in helping practitioners understand the applications of it because that's the logical end point is that it's a cardiovascular health product and everything else will work incrementally better as a result of using nitric oxide. But by providing certain applications and best your work on, you know, outlining various protocols, 
that's really where it's it's been really really helpful and the applications have been fascinating and hearing the feedback from practitioners and the way that they're using the product is is always exciting to see and exciting to hear about so um but Marianne, I really appreciate the time. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to share, but um, this has been really, really helpful. And um, I'm hope hopefully we'll be able to get it out to, to all the right people and they'll be able to kind of learn about, about a little bit about what you're doing. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here. Not a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you.